If you fly FPV, then you got a bunch of LiPos and you need a way to charge them. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the ISDT 608AC, which I think might just be the very best first LiPo charger for you to get. But if you've been in the hobby a little while longer and you need something with a little more power, we'll also compare it to my personal favorite, the Hobbymate D6 Duo. And we'll do a little bit of math to show you how to determine whether the 608AC is enough for you or whether you need something a little bigger. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Let's start with a discussion of what makes the 608 AC so freaking cool. And to do that, we'll talk about a nasty little surprise that a lot of people get when they first buy their first LiPo charger. You're just getting into the hobby. You get a big list of parts to buy. You buy all the parts. They come into your house and here is your brand new LiPo charger and you go to plug it into the wall and hang on a second. What do you mean this freaking thing doesn't work? It doesn't freaking work unless you have a power supply for it. Now, in the back here, we've got an XT60, and of course you can plug it in to a great big 6S LiPo like this if you wanna do field charging, but then how do you charge this one? <laughs> you can plug it into your car battery, and that's fine too. But what most people are gonna plug it into is a DC power supply. The DC power supply plugs into the wall. It takes mains power, 120 volt or 240 volt if you live in a place that uses that, it takes mains power AC in and it outputs 12 volts, 24 volts, something like that, DC. And that is how this little guy gets its power. And a lot of people are super annoyed. They're like, why doesn't it just come with it inside? Hmm. Well, it does. It does. And that brings us to this guy. This is the D6 Duo AC. Now the D6 Duo AC, you can't tell because you're not here, but it's notably heavier than the one I was just showing you, the D6 Duo DC, because it's got a built-in AC power supply. And you can see, in fact, it plugs into the wall, has its own built-in power supply, and oh, all is included. But here's the problem. If you actually travel with this guy, and I do, it's pretty freaking heavy. It is 581 grams. Compare that to this guy here without the power supply, 370, it's 200 grams more. It's heavier and it's bigger. And that 200 grams doesn't sound like much, but when you're packing your backpack full of everything in the kitchen sink that you wanna carry onto an airplane or hike to the bando that you're gonna fly, that 200 grams definitely adds up, you feel it. And that's what makes the ISDT 608AC so freaking cool. Because the 608AC plugs into the wall and it has its own built-in power supply so that when you're at home, you can just uh, you know use it conveniently without having to have any external big honking DC power supply laying around on your bench. Very convenient. If you go on the road and you're going to be in a hotel or something and you need to take it with you, you can see it's not very big. And well, just for fairness, let's weigh it. 300, 359 grams. So it's about the same weight as this one. The ISDT with its power supply is about the same weight as the Hobbymate without the power supply. But what if you're going somewhere where you don't need the DC power supply? What if you're going and you're carrying with you some of these field charging packs that you're going to use to charge up your flight packs, or you're going to run it off your car battery or something like that, some other DC source? The 608AC comes apart like this. This is the power supply, and you just leave that at home, and you just take this with you. And this part weighs 163 grams. Just slip that in your pocket if you really want to. There's nothing to it. So what I think the 608AC has going for it compared to other chargers is that for a beginner just starting out who doesn't want to deal with buying an external power supply and soldering it up and all that nonsense, you get everything you need in one package. The included AC-DC power supply, it's ready to go. But if you want it to be portable, you don't have to carry a big honking charger around or buy a separate charger. The power supply just splits off and it's basically the best of both worlds. But before you can know which of these chargers is really the right one for you, we got to do a little bit of math and figure out how the specs stack up. Is it going to be able, because here's the thing, the more power a charger can output, the faster it can charge your batteries. But charging batteries faster isn't always better because if you charge them too fast, then they light on fire and burn your house down. So is the 608AC going to do it? Or would you be better served by one of these other chargers? 
So the 608 AC is capable of outputting 60 watts when it's running on AC power. And in order to figure out what that means for us, we need to divide that by the voltage of the battery that we're gonna be charging, and that'll tell us how many amps. Watts divided by volts equals amps. That's just the way the math works. Now, how many volts you're gonna be charging depends on the uh, S rating of the battery that you're charging. If you're charging a 4S battery, then a fully charged 4S battery is 16.8 volts. So if we take 60 watts and we divide by 16.8 volts, that means we could charge at a maximum of 3.5 amps. Now, if you think about it, most of the time when you're charging a 4S battery, it isn't at 16.8 volts, right? It starts down at, you know, 14.7 or 15.0 volts and it slowly goes up. So in fact, you'll get more amps earlier in the charge cycle. And as the voltage comes up and the battery approaches full charge, the amps will slow down, which is actually what it does anyway. So maybe it would be better to not use 16.8 volts as our nominal voltage. But I do that anyway, because I'd like to get just a little slower number than a little, than a sort of an artificially inflated number. And anyway, the goal is to compare the two chargers to each other, not to calculate the actual exact amps that we're gonna be charging at. So assuming we're using a 4S battery, we'll be able to get 3.5 amps of charge off the 608AC when it's running off of AC power. How does that compare to the HobbyMate? The HobbyMate can output 200 watts when it's on AC power, and that 200 watts is split between these two channels. So if you're charging one battery, then you'll get 200 watts, but if you're charging two batteries at the same time, you'll only get 100 watts per channel. Well, since this is since the 608 is only a single channel charger, maybe it would be fair to compare it to one channel of the HobbyMate. On the other hand, the HobbyMate's about 120 bucks, the 608's about 60 bucks, so you could buy two of the 608s for the same price as the HobbyMate. So maybe it would be fair to assume that you're charging two batteries at once. Okay, let's do that. So if we're charging two batteries at once, the HobbyMate is gonna give us 100 watts per channel, 100 watts divided by one 6.8 volts equals about six amps. Now, what do those numbers mean for you? Six amps, 3.5 amps. Remember that you're gonna be charging your batteries at about one C. So one C means that if you have a 1500 milliamp hour battery, you charge it at 1.5 amps. If you were to charge a 1500 milliamp hour battery at three amps, that would be two C, twice the battery's capacity. Now it is safe to charge at 2C or if you know what you're doing, it's safe to charge maybe even a little faster, but we're gonna assume a 1C charge rate because that's what most people should be doing unless you know how to safely do it otherwise. So since the 608AC can output about 3.5 amps, it means it could charge a 3,500 milliamp hour battery at 1C or it could charge a 3,500 divided by two, a 1750 milliamp hour battery at about 2C charge rate. A useful piece of information to know is that a 1C charge rate will charge a battery in about one hour, a 2C charge rate will charge a battery in about a half an hour. So, so it's a nice rule of thumb. So for a typical FPV pilot using typical 1500, 1600 milliamp hour packs, what we can see is that the 608AC is more than capable of charging them at a one or 2C rate. The specs of the 608AC are not what would be holding us back on the other hand, if we were to go to something like a 6S battery, well, uh, 60 watts divided by 25.2 volts, that's 6S voltage, it's gonna give us about 2.3 amps. And so we couldn't charge quite as fast at 6S as we could at 4S. But still, that's not bad. 2300 milliamp hour 6S in one hour, or to divide by two, uh, divided by two, an 1100 milliamp hour success in about uh, 30 minutes. That's pretty good. So the specs for this guy are looking pretty good, but that's when you assume that you're only charging one battery at a time. Once you start looking at parallel charging, a bigger charger like the HobbyMate D6 Duo start to make sense. Because when you parallel charge, then the capacity of the batteries adds up. So if you're charging one 1500 milliamp hour pack, at a 1C charge rate, you have to charge it at 1.5 amps. But if you had six of those guys on a parallel board, you would need six times 1.5, you would need nine amps. And the 608AC is not gonna do that. Or will it? Because if we did have an external power supply 
And if we were charging this or powering this guy off of DC, when it's powered from DC, it goes up to 200 watts. And we already did the math for that, but I'll remind you 200 divided by 16.8 equals almost 12 amps. Didn't I already do that math? No, I did 100 watts. So if you did have an external DC power supply, that you could get up to 12 amps off of this. And at that point, the amp rating would come into play. So these guys are limited, not just on their output watts, but also on their output amps. The output amp, and it's whichever comes first. The output amp rating for the 608 AC is eight amps. So although the watts would allow you to get up to 12 amps, if you were powering it off of DC, the amp limit would kick in. You would only get eight amps. Hmm, how many watts would that be? Eight times 16.8, 134 watts. If we compare that then to the Hobbymate D6 Duo, it does 200 watts and 15 amps off of uh, AC. So the D6 Duo would be capable of taking full advantage of its 200 watt rating, even when run off of AC, whereas the 608 AC would not. It's worth pointing out that the D6 Duo also goes up to 650 watts if you're running it off a DC power supply. Of course, you need a pretty big DC power supply in order to do that. But that 650 watts is going to be capable of, well, let's just run the numbers real quick. 650 watts divided by 16.8 volts for a 4S battery. That is 38 amps. So it would run up against its 15 amp output limit. I guess the practical maximum then would be 15 times 16.8 equals 20, 252 watts. Okay. Now more power to you if you follow it along with all that math. But the takeaway for a lot of people is going to be, especially if you are just getting started and especially if you are not thinking about parallel charging. And as a beginner, you shouldn't be thinking about parallel charging. LiPos are dangerous enough as it is, and you want to get a little experience knowing how to tell if a LiPo is unhealthy and knowing how to handle and charge LiPos safely before you start getting into parallel charging. So by that reckoning, the 608, let's turn, turn it right side up. The 608 AC is a pretty good freaking charger. It's 60 bucks. That's compared to the, this, the D6 Duo used to be 160 bucks, but it's actually, I see it on sale now uh, as of this video at, for like 120 bucks. Maybe the price has come down. And 120 bucks, I mean, it's pretty freaking compelling. It's twice as expensive as the 608 AC, but it's got more than twice the output and more than twice the capabilities. If you compare that to the DC only version, which doesn't come with an AC power supply, this guy is only about 90 bucks and is, again, way more capable, but you have to have an external power supply. But for a beginner who doesn't want to deal with buying and hooking up an external power supply, the 608 AC, I think it makes a lot of sense. It does all the charging you're going to need. It's reasonably... Okay, 60 bucks is a little bit of an ask. You can find chargers out there for about 40 bucks and maybe even as low as 30 bucks, but they don't come they often don't come with an AC power supply. So you're going to be adding another 25 bucks on top of that. I think this makes a lot of sense. The other thing is that those cheaper chargers oftentimes have real problems with reliability and like they'll overcharge the battery some of the time. And ISDT just has such a good reputation for making solid, solid stuff. I think the 608 AC makes a lot of sense. And I think if you're just getting into the hobby, you should seriously consider this as your first charger. It's not the cheapest one, but it'll do everything you need it to do with ISDT's reputation for quality and reliability and accuracy. Comes with a power supply, just plug it right into the wall. It's a pretty good deal. On the other hand, if you're a little more experienced in the hobby and you want a higher output charger, I think this guy, either the AC-DC version or the DC-only version if you already have a power supply, I think these are some of the best value you can get because two channels, so you can charge two different kinds of battery at once if you want to, plenty of output power. Uh, it's got freaking non-contact charging for your phone. Just set your cell phone on top of it and it'll start charging your phone. It's even got an external discharge mode where if you have a big wire wound resistor, you can discharge the uh, batteries through the wire wound resistor. It allows you to discharge the batteries or get them to storage much, much faster. This is a really, really good charger. And it is, I've got, I own like four of them and I, uh, uh, Hobbymate only gave me one. <laughs> I bought the others with my own money. It's, this is just my go-to. If you're looking for a charger, 
These chargers and more are on my website, www.fpvknowitall.com. That is where I've got my ultimate FPV shopping list. And I want to tell you about it because we've just sort of relaunched the website. We transitioned the back end from one hosting provider to another. There was a period of about six or eight weeks where we weren't updating the website very much at all because we knew the move was happening. And if you were checking it out, you were noticing it wasn't updating. It has kind of relaunched. I'm going through it uh, and just re-updating all of the pages with the latest and greatest. Some of the things that are on there haven't changed because I think they're still the best and worth mentioning. But the chargers page, I've been through the whole page top to bottom. And there are a couple other chargers there like the ISDT8 and the ISDT Q6 that might be worth a look. But that's going to do it for this video. There's a link down there to the Ultimate FPV shopping list in the video description if you want to check out any of those other chargers. And definitely check out the ISDT 608AC. I think this is a really, this, this really fits in at the beginner level. Heck, you know, for 60 bucks a piece, you might could buy three or four of them. And I don't know. Well, anyway, you decide. <laughs> That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about the math, ask me in the comments. I'll do my best to help you out if that didn't make sense. I know it went by pretty quick. Uh, happy flying, everybody.